once again uh, hello everyone uh, my name is Aldrin and today we'll be talking about AI based image generation software okay so let's get into it right away so uh, I have like a quick question is everyone here familiar with tools like mid journey or, or can you get a can, 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 can you speak reason those who have used mid journey or dolly or yeah okay so like majority of everyone is familiar great right so basically uh, just like a really quick recap it's basically mid journey is like a tool in which you can enter a text prop and then you'll be able to generate images uh, which should basically resemble the prompt here so this is from mid journey showcase their official showcase page uh, where you can see how how varied images are at the same time how aesthetically pleasing these are right and similarly uh, this is from the dali model from google uh, sorry open ai <laughs> yeah so this is from dali 1 and this is dali 2 um, let's move on uh, so the thing about these two software right they are proprietary so we don't really know the images in which they are trained. We don't know the parameters they use. We don't know the weights uh, that they use to train their models. This this excite is taken directly from their website. They just said they use 12 billion parameter version of GPT-3, but they, we don't know the data set they use. Uh, this is speculation saying that uh, OpenAI use uh, Shutterstock images because of which the images are kind of usually, uh, what should I say, inconsistent with the background. But then we, we never know. It's like proprietary stuff. We, we don't know, right? So, so then we can just think about it, right? What could be the implications of these tools? As in, uh, just forget the part about proprietary or open source. Just think about image generation tools as such. What could be the implication? So, uh, when I first got access to uh, the DALI, right? initially there was a wait list. When I got first access to it, like, I was impressed with uh, ability. Like, we could enter a prompt and it could it will actually generate something like uh, a chair on the shape of an avocado and we can get it. But then after I, after I started to work, okay, so this is something uh, which we can explore for fun or for novelty. But then if you think about it, what could be the larger implications these could have? Uh, do you guys think this is a revolutionary or that uh, many industries would change because of it? I mean, these are like good questions to it. So, so let, let's look at a few examples of how this happened, right? So, so this is the famous uh, Great Cascadia earthquake which happened in 2001. And surprisingly, it never really <laughs> happened. This is completely age-generated. So, so one prominent example is like misinformation. Right? Spreading of misinformation uh, became extremely easy to do using these kind of AI, uh, AI uh, image generation software. That is what. Uh, another example of something similar is like Elon Musk with his new girlfriend, uh, who is apparently the CEO of General Motors. So if you think about it, Tesla CEO dating a General Motors CEO. I mean, it seems like so improbable, but then a lot of people started believing it. Finally, Elon Musk himself uh, has to come and saying like, I would never wear such an outfit. Right. So, so that's it. Another example is this was this this became like viral like this was like a huge viral tweet where Pope Francis in the outfit of a uh, tree. This is all the reason. So misinformation is one thing, okay. But then uh, let's skip the fun part of novelty part. Let's think about industry, right? How could uh, actual businesses be using tools like this to optimize costs or to enhance their workflow? So so this is an example of uh here's a lead, right? So Marvel recently had a series called Secret Invasion, the one with uh, Nick Fury and Skrulls, etc. So uh, they actually use AI based image generation to actually generate a whole of the opening sequence. So like they'll be mentioning the cast and all the images which you see behind it, it's all AI generated. So it's like a one and a half minute long video or something. Uh, and then uh, they actually received a lot of backlash saying, if you start doing this, like Marvel is a big company, if you start doing this, soon others will follow. And then a lot of artists will be losing their jobs. Right. So, so, so it's like a turning point kind of thing. There is a lot of backlash. We think about it from a company's perspective. It's like easy, easy to optimize cost for them. So now, we have like Marvel, right? It is in Hollywood, right? But then let's look at something which happened like very near to us. So we are in Kerala, we are in Kochi. And then this is an advertisement by Kalyan Silks, which came like five days ago. It's a full page advertisement. It came in Malayalam Malayalam and Madhavami, like the two prominent newspapers, like full page advertisement. And if you look at it first glance, like, it seems like just like any other advertisement, right? The crazy thing is, this thing is entirely AI generated. We can, we can note that easily if we like really zoom in and look at their fingers, right? Okay, I can zoom for a second. So if you look at their fingers, you see how they are like kind of like wrapped up together, like, something like a mesh together. So that's like a one uh, way to identify an AI based image, right? Just look at their fingers. Usually, uh, a way to test the model would uh, also be like generate like hands or fingers, right? So, but then the crazy thing is like, if you look at it at first glance, we would not even notice that this is a AI based generated image, right? 
the one who made this poster, they said the actual generation part took just like four minutes. And then they took a few more hours to do the layouting. Layouting as in uh, adding the logo, Kalyan uh, logo, and then some description underneath, etc. So, crazy thing is, they were able to do all of this within just a single day. But then, if they were to actually do a proper advertisement like this, they would need several days. You'll have to call in a lot of actors, you'll have to do makeup, uh, give other costumes, then camera, lighting, like so much, so much, uh, what should I say, time consuming activity. They were able to do it within this one. Day. So, the point I'm trying to make here is that. Uh, after this AI hype which came up uh, last year, mainly last year, right, a lot of companies are looking at opportunities. Uh, and then so there's like a lot of possibilities we can do about it. So this is just a recap of what's happening around in Hollywood and around in uh, uh, those that are nearby us as well. There was also a prominent advertisement by Coca-Cola. I don't know how many of you saw it. Like uh, it's like a one and a half minute video of uh, did anyone see that like Coca-Cola advertisement? No. Okay, so I will be linking to uh, I'll give a link to that at the end as well. So and this is uh, from Fiverr. Fiverr is a site where freelancers they usually uh, come to say, okay, I, I know these skills. Uh, you just pay me and I'll do stuff for it. So this thing called stable diffusion. It's actually popular in Fiverr nowadays. A lot of people saying, okay, I will build you something with stable diffusion. Just pay me this much money, like so 8k and then 13k. Like, so there are a lot of people with it uh, who are ready to offer services like this. Okay, so that's it. I hope like everyone's curious enough. Uh, so now let's get into the actual talk. We're going to be talking about stable diffusion. And then how you think it how you can get started with open source AI based image generation tools. Right. So okay. So this would be the outline. We'll be talking about what stable diffusion is, how you can use it to actually generate images. And then how you can make uh, the images that you generated much better using a little bit of prompt engineering. And then we'll be talking a little bit about advanced features of uh, stable diffusion. And then I'll be giving some resources and uh, then finally we'll conclude. Okay. So a little bit of who am I? So my name is Alton Jensen. I recently graduated from a model engineering college, uh, Trikagara. Uh, I, I, I love to build like cool software. Uh, I've been, uh, should I say, inspired by a lot of people in the developer community, especially the student developer community. Uh, there's like a lot of people like Subin Sivi, uh, I used to read his blog and got really inspired. Uh, I, 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 I am passionate about like free and open software. I've been using Linux for like the five years, last five years or so. Uh, currently I'm building a, with a friend, I'm building a product for like automating job applications too. Make it easier to operate a company. If you're interested, we can catch up later. Then, okay, let's okay, let's begin. Now. Ah, yes, mandatory Arch Linux flex. Okay, uh, so you now it's actually interesting. So uh, I would suggest everyone to maybe pull out your phone and then uh, just either use scan this QR code or just go to this link. It's basically just a way to. It, it will lead you to a web application. Uh, I'll just show you. It will lead you to a web application like this. It's basically. A very clean, very minimal interface uh, with which you can just try out just to get a taste of actually uh, generating images just from a text. Okay. So, just, I'll add the link once again. Just try this out. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about what stable diffusion is. By that time, just get a feel of actually generating images from a text prompt. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if you can't scan the QR code, just go to bit.ly slash polisano. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll keep the link here as well. Alright, so now let's talk about what stable diffusion is. We know about Midjourney, we know about uh, Dali by OpenAI. So both of these are text image generation software which are proprietary. Alright, so stable diffusion is an open source alternative. It is made by Stability AI and Runway. Both these companies are pretty famous. Stability AI is like an actual open version of an open AI, how it should happen, I would say. Uh, they, are, they do a lot of work on generative AI uh, and LLM, LLM based uh, software as well. Randway is a company which uh, mostly focuses on research and they have a product called Gen1. Uh, Gen1 is, is basically text to video generation software. So as of now, there is a later model called Gen2 with which you can generate up to 16 seconds of video just from a simple text. So uh, with their funding, uh, based on this paper, high resolution image synthesis with latent diffusion model, that is the base paper with which uh, this technology is based on. This is the paper. So the actual tech behind this, like, uh, I would say really mathematically oriented and super complex. But I'll give a very high level overview of uh, how this thing actually works. Like a very high level overview. So that when you see further, either you read the paper or when you see further view the videos, it would be much more so. So essentially, what we're going to be doing in stable diffusion is you're going to be generating images from random noise. From random noise, based on the prompt, you'll be reaching to an image. Okay. So what I did is stable, consider stable diffusion like a model, just like any other ML model. As input, you give a prompt. And as output, you should be getting an image. So how they train the model is, 
you take a, you take a large data set of images which are annotated annotated as in for each image you'll be having a pretty good description like for example just an image and then you have the description of it like a, like an alt text which you enter in a website right so you take thousands of not thousands like billions of billions of images like that and then there's a it's concept of two two phase one is called forward diffusion the other is called like backward one so in the forward diffusion process you take an image you apply some noise to it in this case it's called gaussian noise by noise you can consider it like a, like a grains or you modify the pixels slightly so that image becomes more and more distorted so you apply some noise you get one image you apply noise to that one you get another image which is more noisy eventually you go there until you get completely static noise you do the steps like thousands of times and then you get to like completely random noise then based on this prompt you're trying to reverse engineer it so what the model actually learns is it learns to identify noise and transform it slightly to get uh, an image which is based on the prompt so what you do is you take the prompt then you vectorize it and then you create an embedding out of it what that means is suppose you have a sentence like john is king right so when you vectorize it you'll get a an array of numbers so like minus 0.1 minus 0.005 0.985 0.6 something some numbers like that. now this vectorization is a separate part this was uh, there even before the stable diffusion whole thing so you vectorize a number then based on the number you tweak it slightly with the reference image to get back to an image which is closer to the initial image which you used to train based on the prompt so this is very high level of it it's like much more complexity underneath it but this should give you an intuition on how this works from static noise based on the prompt you got to be training a model to actually generate an image which initially uh, you had to come there so this will be using a reinforcement model of deep learning technique uh, mid journey actually uses uh, rl lecture it's called reinforcement learning based on human feedback uh, that's why when you when you enter a prompt in mid journey you usually always get it in terms of 4a you get 4a means that much and then when you choose one image to upscale and when you do feed uh, there's an option called favorite to so when you choose an image that's actually signaling the ai saying okay out of these four this is the one which closely resembles so this one is improving continuously so that's a uh, that's it yeah that's how it works so this is how the stable diffusion works so now let's come to the fun part that is how you can get started with stable diffusion like right away so okay so one obvious uh, way which may may think of is okay so this is a research paper why don't we take the code uh, from it and then run so that's like a it's like a good solution you may think it's pretty good but then the only issue is like let to it's a it's a bit complex to run the direct code uh, there is a github repository you can check it out i'll be linking it as well this is by the subdt the base uh, repository so i'll show you like an even easier way uh, with which you can start okay pause the presentation okay so there's an easier way to get started that is by using uh, another project uh, by this guy called uh, automatic level alert and this guy right this guy is like a legend in the field of generative ai there are three main people who are like widely known uh, one is this guy automatic level alert this another guy called cavender who makes a lot of google collab notebooks for lot of llms or generative ai stuff and there's like one more guy who i am assuming if you were there for korean bio stock on whisper you might have not this guy called uh, gregarlo these three people are like really extremely popular in this, in this field so let's go to uh, his project it's like it's like a really amazing project which does a lot of the hard work behind behind the scenes so it's basically like a web based ui with which you can actually uh, uh, you can actually configure a lot of parameters to optimize your image so right now i'm assuming all of you must have at least tried the initial link guide here right so that had like just one input field and then you can control how many images you want so this is like much more powerful and much more versatile uh, this is like incredibly popular project you got like 100k stars yeah so uh, it's really popular project uh, i would suggest you guys to like uh, get started with it there are installation scripts for windows mac Linux, etc. It's like one-click install you can do. It's super easy. Uh, but then I'll show you like an even easier way, to, something better than this one as well. That is using uh, this project. Uh, this is basically a dockerized version of the same movie. Right? Uh, this should be. Uh, I personally use this one. I found it like way easier to set up. And then even if there's some version mismatch issue, it's like super easy to. If you know a docker, it's like super easy to manage. I would suggest doing that. Okay. So now let's 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 start like how to, let's see how to actually use it. So. It's basically, uh, initially you take the Docker image, you do a Docker command up, and then you would be getting a UI which should be resembling something like this. Uh, there would be some. Uh, I've added a few extensions here, but other than that, this should be the UI which you get when you just start using that project. Uh, I am recommending that project because it is the most popular, and so even if you face any issues or bugs, uh, can be rest assured that others would have already felt it uh, the same. So it would have already be having a solution to the issues. Okay. So this is the. Uh, 
tool which you can use to generate like really awesome images using table diffusion. So I, I, I just uh, talk about the main main parts of it. The first one is called the prompt field. So here is where uh, I'm not sure if it's visible. I'll just read aloud. Can you just increase the size? Oh yeah, sure. There's a lot of elements, so I'm not sure increasing will help. But anyway, anyway. so if we can you can enter a prompt here, and then there's something called this is a field for a negative prompt. So uh, I'll show you how that works. So as in the example we saw, uh, let's just say uh, uh, if anyone is trying the other, probably I would recommend you to hold on a bit. Uh, we are running on the same server, so let's see. So so this is a prompt I tried for like a young boy eating ice cream, and then I added something called a realistic, basically just a way to get much more realistic, closer to reality kind of shape. And then you got something like, okay, there's something like a biscuit here, right? So then we can add like a negative prompt here. Or, or I'll show you another. Okay, so let's say I add the pink as a negative prompt. So let's see what happens. So now it's going to be generating an image. Um, and then it's, it's just removed all the instances of pink from the whole image. So that's basically negative, negative prompting. And then now I'll talk about a little bit about the parameters. Uh, here we can control the width and height. So like, uh, I don't say square image, right? So it's like 512 by 512. That's it. Then batch count is for how many images you want to generate at once. Both of these are similar. If you do two by two, you get four images at once. Uh, and then CFG ski, uh, there are a few other parameters which, uh, which for which we cannot really recommend what is the correct way to do. You have to tweak it yourself to get like better images. So one of them is our CFG scale. Usually it's recommended to keep something between five and 15. Um, usually, but then it varies depending on the style of image you want to create. And then similarly sampling steps. It is recommended to create at least uh, Around, uh, above 50, the more sampling steps you take, the more longer it will take the image to be generated, but more crisper or more, what should I say, uh, more flexible the image should be actually. Okay, that's contract, right? <laughs> yeah. So, and then the seed value, yeah. Seed value, this is basically about when you want to preserve a style. Like, for example, it's similar to the S strand function which we may use in C or C, right? How do you initialize a random number in C? Basically, you use S strand and then you assign it to the current line, like, right? So the idea is that if you have one kind of see earlier when you see uh, the image version of a boy, it's much more realistic. Right now it's a little bit like a cartoony kind of little bit vibe, right? Yeah. So that's because when you say minus one, it means like randomized each time. So if, if I do the generation once again, it will be like a different image because each time the seed is like different. But then if you want to have okay, so if you want to like have like this kind of something similar uh, style again, we just need to copy the seed. So this is the seed which we are using. Right? Yeah. So it's copy that one and then we can like paste it here to get like very similar. So if I don't change any of the parameters here, if I generate it again, I should be getting an image which is almost like the exact similarity of the other. I mean, the same style I have here. So that is about the seed value thing. Then what else? Okay, so this is, this is like an absolute basics, right? So you can get started right away by just downloading the package and then just, just with these many parameters that I taught. Suppose if you want to go like one step beyond, right? Like how do you get actual realistic image like the Elon Musk thing which we saw? And also this one has like some issues, right? It is not like perfect. So how do you, how do, you do that? So let's talk about that as well. Right. So moving on. So then, so then uh, the one crazy thing about uh, having like open source models is that the community, right? They take your model. They rip it apart, they look inside, and then they build it back up in much better, more creative ways. So, thing is like, once the initial weights of the model was created, people started looking at it, then they started exploring it, and then they started making much better models, better as in, with different, different like features. So like, uh, uh, is everyone here familiar with fine tuning, what fine tuning is? Yeah? Fine tuning, yeah. Fine tuning, okay. So quick recap is basically you have a deep learning model. Then at the, at the end, towards the end, there will be like a lot of different layers, which always like you add extra extra images or whatever data to make it like much more optimized for a particular task. Kind of. So this is a really cool site called Civit AI. You can get a transfer models here. You basically go to uh, right for I go to the view more section. So you'll get a lot of categories of so different kind of models here. Now all of these models are created for different purposes. Uh, there's a lot for there's a lot for, for anime or for like a specific kind of background. Etc. Uh, right, so, so this is like uh, so a lot of uh, different models are available. So if you want to check it out, means just just download the model, and then uh, in this table diffusion, this project you can you can just add the uh, other models in. This is for, I'll show you how it works. So yeah, so when you 
I'm using it from uh, this particular Debian server. So when you have that same application uh, project, the star is in this models folder. And then when you hit the refresh of that same model, you should be getting it here. So this is what affects the generation the most. The, the model you use uh, will be having the most impact on the generation of your image. And then other everything else will, uh, will be using to make it like fine tune it a little bit better. So, uh, so if you want to have, there are different models available for either if you want like a realistic faces or if you want to generate like cars, right, uh, or say particular size of clothing or there are a lot of different models for like, uh, you know, a traditional Indian woman or like what's called a woman wearing sari or like, so, so a lot of different, uh, it, it a lot of possibilities. I would suggest everyone to check this out, it's a really cool site. Uh, they just changed the UI a little bit very recently because it's a little bit slow. But then, yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of options to get, uh, to explore and try it out. Uh, I would give some recommendation. This is one called a Protogen. This is very recommended in a lot of communities, Protogen model. Uh, it's a general purpose model. So you could be, you should be able to use it for a lot of different tasks. At the same time, it offers photorealism, which means the images generated will look pretty close to reality. Right? If you look at the face, it's like, it's very hard to decipher if you, at first glance, if it's an actual image or an AI generator. Okay, so that is one way to get started. Let's go. But then but the only drawback to this is that you would need at least a 60 TB of GPU to actually run this thing, right? So then, yeah, this may put us, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a difficulty for some of us. Like I personally used to do this initially on a 10 TB CPU with the 4 GB RAM, but yeah. So, when you say 6 GB, you mean the video RAM? Yeah, the video RAM. The GPU memory should be 6 GB. Uh, other, other normal RAM, I think you need like only this 4 would do. The GPU, GPU is what is like the deciding yeah. factor basically. Right. Yeah, so, but then no worries, there are like alternatives. So, I have added a Google Collab link. Uh, everyone is familiar with Google Collab, right? Yeah, yeah so it's, it's basically like a Python environment which you can run the, on Google service. Uh, and then uh, it's like free, you get up to I think 12 GB of GPU for free. So, so it's like super easy, you can actually run the same automatic 11.11 11 UI which I showed you right now. You can actually do that on Google Collab. Uh, you just need to like install the packages and then you get the link, uh, which when you click it, you will be hung the same UI which I, which I just showed out. So the reason I am again talking about the automatic learning, uh, this is not the only option to generate images. There are other UIs similar to uh, automatic learning. And this is like extremely popular. So popular that in different communities under Reddit, right? In stable diffusion communities on Reddit. They would usually say, oh bro, just use 50 percent noise strength in automatic learning. It, it almost became like a like a noun kind of thing. So it's so hugely popular. Uh, and then if you can get uh, accustomed to this particular UI, then every other UI usually would be able to it up really quickly. Okay, so then let's have like a quick recap right now. So we talked about table diffusion. It's basically an open source alternative to Midjourney and tools like Dali. With which, uh, what we're doing is we're generating an image from random noise based on a prompt. That is table diffusion. The easiest way to get started would be something called automatic 11.11s 11 uh, web UI. I'll be uh, giving the link as well. Uh, and then the factor which affects most about your generation would be the model that you choose. Different models are optimized for different categories, for different styles. There are some general purposes model like Protogen that is showed. So you download the model, and then you add your or prompt that you want to be. Then you can fine tune it better by adding negative prompts, or you can change the CFG scale, sampling method, etc. Now, we, we can't really say, okay, this is the best uh, numbers you have to use. No, it's more like a little bit of tweaking, try and error kind of thing. Something like, I don't know, running correct examples. But that is the main process that you can do. So now, uh, let's talk about how do, you, how do you write better prompts, right? Because uh, this, this definitely has an effect on the direction in which you want to guide the, guide the diffusion. If you remember uh, seeing the other image, right? The alternate text is pretty large, right? So, so let's see what are the tips for that. So, so uh, there are like four main tips. First one would be, you have to be specific and explicit. When I mean explicit, what I mean is like, be as detailed as possible. Give maximum description. If you want the image to be like extremely realistic, just to like uh, photo realistic HDR or like add like a lot of different styles, so, uh, but just don't do something like cat or like white cat. Don't do that. Just insert like white cat uh, and then photo realistic uh, HDR with some exact like if you uh, think about mid journey, right? You have an option to like a uh, lot of different parameters along with it. Right? You can the w hyphen w hyphen a or something etc. So uh, I would say use maximum. Uh, I, I'll give you examples for that. So this is like a site called Lexicode. Uh, it's basically a place where a lot of people submit their artworks, uh, which is created using table division. So you can just go to uh, speed and then just click stable division here. 
So that means like you'll be able to get a lot of image inspiration. And then if you're interested in any one image, you can just click that image, and then that will show you like the prompt used. Right. So this is the prompt that used to generate this image. And then you'll also be able to see the seed value. Right. So you can basically take this prompt, take the seed value, and then you can put it in the stable diffusion in the UI which you showed. Then you should be able to get something similar. It may not be the exact same thing, but you should be able to. And even in the Civitai website, like when you scroll down this, you'll be able to see a lot of people generating these images using that particular model. Then when you click on any any of that image, you'll be able to see the prompt they use along with, uh, yeah, the prompt. The, this is a positive prompt. See, it's, it's like super big, right? Yeah, so they use this prompt along with even larger negative prompt. Then this is the model they use. They use this sampling, this scale, etc. So it's a good way to get started, right? You'll be able to get inspiration from these photos. And then you can try slowly replicating it and maybe tweaking it here and there to generate the image that you want to. So that's a one good way. Uh, and then, okay, that's my yeah. Okay, uh, next one is what we to use different artist names. So like, uh, let's just say I have an image of a cat. Then I want it to be as if painted by Picasso for something. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so then what I do is like, I basically uh, check out like, Different artists and how and an uh, example of how their paintings look like. So these are like see it's Van, it's like Van Gogh paintings. So suppose I want an image which should be somewhere close by. I can just say like maybe use these parameters like in the style of Vincent Van Gogh. And then it should generate an image which is closer to that style. So that's like one way. The other one is uh, yeah use extensive use of negative prompts. There are a lot of people who doesn't use negative prompts at all, and then they worry why their image has these these distortions or these issues. So you you can try using negative prompts. Uh, there are some other people who use negative prompts way more extensively than positive prompts. You can try out which, or, which one works for your case. And then finally, tweaking the parameters in the main web UI. Uh, I have I've kept it for the last one because uh, you can get a lot of it just by changing the model and then just by adjusting the prompt. In the end, if, the, if, if still you want to make different variations, try tweaking the CFD scale, uh, then the sampling method, sampling steps, etc. Okay, so these are the main uh, four tips to get better images. I've also added like two blocks on like even more ideas on how you can uh, improve your generations. So now let's go, let's move to a little bit of advanced features. Uh, before that, is there any question? Like, is there anything not clear? Is there anything I should explain more? Yeah, so just a question. Uh, can you like impose a style on an image that you took by yourself with stable image? Yeah, sure, yeah. So we can do that actually. How does that work like? Yeah, we're going to be covering the that's advanced, oh, advanced okay. section. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, is there any other question? I'll come to that. Any other question? No. Okay, good. So, let's move on to the advanced section. Um, yeah. So, uh, we're going to talk about even more cool stuff in the UI. Uh, it's mainly cuts out these six parts. I'll, I'll, we have time, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, first one is called like LoRa. Uh, LoRa stands for like low rank adaptation. It, this has nothing to do with the LoRa, which we hear in the electronics and communication part. Uh, this is basically about uh, how do you impose a style on a particular image. So, so I'll give you an example. So, so a quick tip: uh, when you go to say AI, by default it will show everything, like all the models you want to use, or including other things like LoRa. So you can just uh, toggle it here to adjust. So by default, when you when I say model, what I mean is like set point part. Okay. They will usually be ending an extension in .ckpt or .safe tensor. And usually uh, these models will be having at least several GB inside, at least two GB minimum they will be having. Uh, and then you download it and then you use it, yeah. Now I'll show you what LoRa is. LoRa is basically how you impose a certain style to the image you generate. So for example, um, LoRa is really good for, uh, let's say you wanna uh, have like portrait images of a particular person. So how do you make the face similar to a one particular person? So in that case, you can use a Laura. Uh, there was a really good example of uh, Harrison Ford. So you say uh, a man riding a bike, and then you add a Laura at the end, and then suddenly the man's face will be like Harrison Ford. Uh, but then very recently, I think two days ago or something, they took down the model. I think they got some copyright issue. Uh, I'll show you the another example uh, in the same way. So you can get Laura's by going to this icon here, and then we'll have this called, tab called Laura. Can, you can download LoRa's from CBTI itself, just filter LoRa, download a LoRa you like. I'll show an example of a own LoRa, which is like kind of good. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, see the kind of, uh, the specific style, it's like the cute face and then little girl kind of vibrate. 
so that is basically Lawrence. Lawrence will usually be only having a few hundred MB size. So this one is like 144 MB. So what it actually does is you take a model, you generate an image, and then you use Lora on top of the generator image to get a particular style. Okay. So uh, one example like in MM, it's this thing called Bamboo Ray. It's like okay, it basically gives of a Japanese aura kind of vibe. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I maybe I. Uh, So uh, this is how you use Laura. You, if you click that, click it here, or you just type uh, Laura and then Laura name. Uh, you can download Laura from the video again and then paste it uh, the name here. Then you get like something like okay, let's see it without without Laura. Okay, so the lighting is like different. Like it's like a, it's like a. Let's see once more. This bamboo light model is like, uh, I'd say like very minimal, but then so you see how the lighting is like different. Uh, it's like, it's like, it's may seem like minimal, but then uh, there are like even powerful models. Like I, I really want to show this one. This one you can try it out. Uh, and then sometimes Lawrence will be having a trigger words, like when you want the light uh, to happen. So for example, uh, this one is used with this model called Ravanimator. This is a good model if you want to create a, a AI based video generation, like small GIF kind of thing using save animation. This is a good model. And then they are using, they are suggesting using it with that particular one. But then this will apply styles to that. So this is like some other example you can see here. And then uh, let's look at the prompt as well. So yeah, see, see how in the end they get uh, this Laura kind of thing. So this is the main prompt, and they they they're saying use this particular uh, Laura. Okay. That's a way to copy styles to it, to an image. Uh, then the other, let's talk about even more other ways. So then there are two things called impending and image to image. Uh, just I'll show you how it will. So yeah, so these are ways uh, by which you could replicate functionalities of things like Photoshop, right? Using this text. So basically, you add an image here, and then you you can try to like change. Factly. For example, you add an image of a image of a boy looking at a bird, and then you add a uh, you add an image, then you add just draw it uh, draw a circle around image, and you saying change that image to something else, like let's just say. Uh, a peak or whatever, something like that. So that actually works. Uh, that's called like uh, image. Uh, ima uh, that's that, that would come and it's called uh, in painting. Then image to image means you you take an image and then you ap apply a prompt on the whole image, not just on the mask. So for example, uh, I could show an image. Uh, wait. Maybe maybe at the end uh, I'll show an image. I'll show it. Okay. Then there's something called control. Net. Control is like a really uh, came out as a huge thing recently. So control is where uh, how you can. Uh, have a generation be guided based on a reference image. So it's not like you're applying a style on the reference image, you're guiding the initial generation uh, based on a, uh, let's just say a pose of that reference image. So for example, uh, I could add a control net image of a person uh, doing like this, like holding his chair or something. So I'm saying uh, uh, a man looking at the camera as a prompt. So then what happens is the may final output will be a man looking at the camera, but then he'll be holding like this. So it's like we are guiding the image saying, uh, follow this reference prompt, okay. So that's a good way. And then you can use all of this together. So you can use control it along with the Laura. So if you want, I can say uh, Harrison Ford uh, looking at the camera, but then he'll be holding a face like this. So that's like a one which you can check out. And then this deform, this is like a really cool thing called deform. This became like uh, really popular on YouTube and Inst uh, Instagram shorts mainly. Uh, I mean YouTube, yeah. This is about how uh, you can Stitch a lot of images generated using Ableton Diffusion together, and then create a video out of it. So it's actually it looks really cool when you so ask. Yeah, so this is a video I created like uh, yesterday. So see how it's like transitioning like quickly, right? It looks like kind of it's interesting, right? So and also you can do it in the same UI itself. Uh, how you do that is basically go to this uh, before part. Is this on a stable diffusion that thing that you showed right now? Yeah, that's a uh, video I created. Yeah. No, is it part of the sta uh, stable diffusion kind of feature creating this video? Yeah, oh, so right. yeah, yeah. So it's basically like we are creating a lot of different images and then okay. stitching them together. So stable diffusion that's the generating part. Just right? not the stitching part. Stitching part also we can do in the same UI. Oh, you can. Yeah. Do oh, yeah. Like what is doing the stitching? Ha. Huh, so it's, um, we so have a model that is strictly trying to figure out what this, how to associate. Yeah, images. because the transitions were like really yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. I told you about that. So basically, this is the prompt I gave for that. Okay, so I'm not sure if it's. So much so basically what he's saying is I want the initial frame to be a tiny cute bunny. I'm saying I want a 30th frame to be a 
a, something of a capture. So I'm saying 16 from should be 9 megs. So what it actually does is, based on this interval, it will try to generate images which goes on transitioning from the first node to the next node. So, so we, we got like let's say 30 different images are generated by the model, okay, which goes on transitioning. And then we can, if you want, we can actually switch it up ourselves using any video editing software. But then so how many images did you create originally? Four? Is that one, two? No, no, no. It's not no, generating no. anything. No. The model itself is generating Oh, all. okay. Right. No, no, I think it's like... <laughs> no, I think he's generated four yeah. things and he's... The stitching is also done... <coughs> four timestamps. Yeah. Four. Zero, thirty, and sixty. So that's like four nine. distinct images. So, uh, so, so we actually generated 120 images. Okay. We actually generated 120 images. But then we don't have to give prompts for each 120 images. It's the same with four timestamps. We gave four prompts saying these. Four prompts with four huh, images. And huh, the huh. ones in between are generated by. Yes, exactly. Right. And that, that is generated such that the transition thing looks got seamless. It, got it, got it. Right, so that is the idea. Then this particular uh, UI, uh, stable diffusion UI, right? It even. So if you think things, about yeah. it, we don't have real control over the transition, that uh, those transitionary images, right? Because those four images that you created, we have full control because we gave it the prompts and we got those four images. We so the ones in between, like you said, uh, yeah. that 120 minus four, those are being like that's completely uh, stable diffusion deciding like these are the images in between. There is a there is a way we can influence it further as well. Right? Okay. Uh, we can add this along with control line. So we can say let's say transition should be like uh, at this particular instance you use this control line to guide it. So like oh, uh, transition to be like enlarging or something. We can do that to an extent. Uh, but uh, what I found is uh, also you can do. Right now I give in the, in the intervals of 30, right, 0, 30, we can make it even shorter That's if true. you want. That could work. Uh, okay. Yeah, but then uh, I would say like based on the model generating, it seems like much better and cleaner. I tried the other one, but then the model generating seems much more clear and much more seamless to it. Okay. Yeah, so that is uh, D4. Uh, uh, this, is a, this is a cool way to you can make this even better. Right? You take a normal video of you, let's say walking, uh, you take a screenshot of one particular frame, you feed that as the initial prompt. As in, you can, you can, you can, you just have to actually insert the very first image you want. Then from that image, you can transition to a totally different one and then create it. So it'll be really cool when you stitch it back up. Um, right. So then uh, these are like some really cool resources. I would, I would really suggest going to this Reddit subreddit, uh, r slash table dimension. You get a lot of inspiration of people doing like really amazing things with uh, this technology. Um, yeah, and then this is the uh, GitHub of the code of the project which I showed you earlier. Uh, I, this is uh, this is basically done with Python. It's like a streamlit. Uh, anyone familiar with streamlit library in Python? Yeah, yeah. It's like a really cool way to make awesome uh, GPUs with Python. And then it is actually using behind the scenes the same uh, the same this one, the same this one. We can uh, give it as an API as well. So there are APIs for stability, uh, which is I think I think you have to pay right. You get free credits, but then you have to pay uh, some free credits. Ha, you get some free credits. Ha. But if you use something like this, then you get the API. By default, so you can you can do everything which you which we did like manually using triggers, etc. You can do that using code. Um, so that's how this project is created. Basically, I I added the code for that as well. Um, okay, so my so uh, one second. Yeah, so why let's go to the conclusion of the day. So, right, so let's talk about the conclusion part. Basically, I would say right now all of us right, we got like an incredible opportunity. This is not like some people come at this with uh, giving Photoshop, right? This is not like Photoshop. It just made it like much more easier and accessible to everyone. Right? Uh, we don't need to have like a powerful server to run these things. We can use Google Cloud app, Cloud app, or if you have like a 360 GPU, locally we can do this. And then the possibility we can create is like endless. There are so many. Uh, yeah, just go to that uh, subreddit. I would really recommend everyone to uh, try it out. And then maybe sort that based on popularity at all time. You'd be blown away by the awesome things which people have. At the same time, you would see a lot of misinformation spreading. And we are right now at a stage where. We can't really believe anything which we see, right? How, how do we know it's uh, age generated or not? A lot of content which we see on websites mostly are like age generated. Uh, and when, when I generate, it generates really well that such are the SEO is optimized as well. So when you search for something, it would use the article which you should come at the top of a Google result may not be even authentic, right? And then even median, uh, did anyone watch the Netflix show called John is, John is Awful? Any, anyone? No. The Black Mirror episode? Okay, so it's basically about how in the future like, the content would be more personalized and more age generated. So each of us could get our own particular set of CDs or episodes based on our taste, personalized for us. But then we'll be living in a bubble kind of thing, right? We'll be amplifying what we believe, what we want to know more and more. So I, I don't want to be pessimistic. I am I'm talking to you, you all who are like, you know, 
literally in this as a kind knowledgeable about technology the common man can easily be uh, confused like uh, i i have often like clarified a lot of my relatives okay this is age and this is not real you don't believe that so like scam message don't believe so we know that it's not magic we know like how it works right now we, see, we we know how easy it is to get started uh, i'll end with like this one example so this is an example of this is another video of me playing a guitar this is like a toy okay. like like robot down here can you check out like how how like consistent it looks you can understand i i got some like this one first it's like a deep fake video i got some like very first try with just one image of robot down here and you can i i played one second with you this check the consistency as in see there's no like uh, you know usually the skin should be white but then it's like blended like very nicely right it's very hard to decipher right the point i'm trying to make is that the technology are there everything is open source i didn't use any proof everything is open source it's like super easy to make right it's very glasses as well right yeah exactly the same glasses that he's wearing yeah and even the hair is like yeah it's like honestly the first time i tested i was like blown away it's like super easy to do uh the reason i'm trying to take say is that uh, i mean this this technically doesn't come under stable diffusion sets but the overall like a a base image generation like that so the technology out there there's so much we can do about it just need to be like wary about you know, it's like this here right there's like great power, power out there so just be responsible about how, about how we use so that would be with that i think i came to kind of just thank you guys for that for being said that you were using pentium machine to generate all of this is that what you were saying no no uh, right now i'm using a uh, python processor but then i'm saying i used to be having a pentium laptop so i can relate when someone says like 60 with if you under for it but with gold color i think it should work even on pentium machines so <laughs> yeah i just want to give a shout out to dev that uh, and mark like they have some written nervous about the talk so they guys have never and then uh, i don't want to call out to tech sir uh, he's a teacher in my college I uh, told thanks to him that uh, wife has got into this exploratory phase. Uh, he gave me access to a 8 GB GPU server. I know I call it so that was like a starting point for me to explore a lot of it. And finally, so then to be he's not not here but I just want to say uh, like I got to be inspired by reading his blog so that's that's me. Uh you guys can uh, check uh, you guys can find me on every year on like this Aldrin Jensen no spaces no ADR and so. I also have a blog. I don't usually write up much but you can check it out. I would suggest everyone to try out these things. I'll send the uh, PDF as well. Just uh, try out, go create stuff, uh, share it on socials, tag me, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. I'd love to see what they guys do. I have yeah. one yeah. question. You yeah. just mentioned about 8 GB, right? So it, was it again 8 GB? Was it just normal RAM or was it uh, GPU RAM? VRAM. Yeah. It's 6 GB minimum. 6 GB GPU. Oh, uh, 8 GB GPU is recommended. You can try at okay. least 6 GB GPU of VRAM. VRAM. So like VRAM. NVIDIA yeah. graphics card, okay. right? So that particular so gave you access to that VRAM. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like this project which we see here, this uh, this is running on the uh, model engineering college servers right now. Uh, an 8 GB. Uh, is it 3080? Uh, no, it's. Uh, I'll show you one second. It's a 1060 1080. It's an 2080. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.